Good evening. Uh, this lecture about the management of active curing syndrome, and she, it will be based on the uh, last guideline uh, published in 2023 and ACC guideline for uh, cardiovascular revascularization. Uh, so we'll talk about the definition of myocardial infarction, pathogenesis myocardial infarction, clinical presentation, initial assessment and workup and treatment. The definition of the acute coronary syndrome is represent a clinical spectrum of acute coronary disease that include unstable angina, acute myocardial infarction, and sudden coronary death. In the most cases, Underlying mechanism is obstruction of coronary artery blood flow by a thrombus that develops as a result of pressure or erosion of underlying atherosclerotic blood. Less common cause are myocardial infarction without non, uh, uh, myocardial infarction with non obstructed coronary artery disease, uh, so coronary artery dissection, coronary artery spas, and coronary microvascular dysfunction. Uh, so this is the list of causes of acute coronary syndrome. Uh, the causes include the coronary causes, uh, include coronary embolism, coronary myocardial uh, dysfunction, coronary spas, coronary thrombosis, myocardial bridging, blood rupture erosion, spontaneous coronary artery dissection. Non-coronary uh, cardiac causes include cardiac trauma, cardiomyopathy, cardiotoxins, myocarditis. Sternus exercise, the Kotsova cardiomyopathy, transplant rejection. And non cardiac causes include active respiratory distress syndrome, allergic hypersensitivity reaction, wind stage renal disease, inflammation, pulmonary embolism, sepsis, and stroke. So, what is genius of active coronary syndrome? A start of the uh, macrophage uh, formation and foam formation. And then um, intimal xanthoma uh, formation. Uh, this ever progress with lipid ball from smooth muscle cell apoptosis and deposition of a prostaglandin and hyaluronase uh, and lipid formations. So adaptive uh, intimal thickening uh, progress will lead to pathological intimal thickening. Uh, the pathological intimal thickening may uh, at this stage uh, erosion occur, which is about 30 percent of the feet dependent to the erosion occurs at the uh, level of the just intimal uh, thickening. And this erosion may lead to the active myocardial infarction and unstable angina or if incident cardiac death. In account with one of the third of the acute uh, coronary event due to erosions uh, of the uh, intima. The the, uh, the pathological intimal uh, thickening, if not deteriorated, will lead to early fibroatheroma formation within late fibroatheroma formation. In this stage, uh, seventy percent of the uh, of the erosion of the uh, Fibroatheroma occur in either in early stage of fibroatheroma or late stage of fibroatheroma, which is totally uh, occur for one hour uh, cause when one third acute coronary event. Uh, this uh, progress with inflammation, angiogenesis, and intraocular um, rupture and hemorrhage uh, this lead to progressive uh, core enlargement. Uh, the late uh, fibroatheroma uh, uh, with inflammation will lead to uh, thin cap uh, fibroatheroma, which is which is by definition is not obstructed unless there is a rupture with, uh, that lead will uh, acute coronary events. If thin cap fibroatheroma uh, lesion of progress with the progressive core uh, enlargement, increase in the 
black burden and uh, this may lead to the obstructed lesions and this obstructed lesion will if it is the uh, not rupture, it may lead to the anginal symptoms the rupture uh, will lead to acute myocardial infarction and stable angina or sudden cardiac uh, this may heal and lead to fibrous and fibro uh, calcite the black this lead to the uh, chronic uh, total occlusion of coronary artery vessels and may lead uh, to the stable angina may lead to uh, heart failure without acute coronary syndrome may lead to if uh, to sitting uh, cardiac uh, death um, this uh, fibrous and fibrocalcific black may lead, uh, may lead to medial calcification and may result in the calcified nodules acute myocardial action stable angina or uh, sudden cardiac which is around uh, two to five percentage of acute coronary events so differential diagnosis of the acute coronary syndrome any patient with suspicion of acute coronary syndrome should suspect uh, um, lethal uh, causes in the top of the differential diagnosis which include acute coronary syndrome or the dissection hemolymphalism any other lethal cause that may think that may fit and you should look for it and uh, make investigation to it in or to let out and think about other uh, causes uh, there is many list of the causes uh, as listed in this table uh, what is the differential diagnosis acute syndrome uh, include these causes whether this is a cardiac uh, pulmonary vascular or gastric or intestinal causes and lastly uh, psychiatric uh, so history will uh, help us to elicit and differentiate the acute current syndrome which is pain from an acute current syndrome which is pain. The acute current syndrome which is pain typically have central chest pain and maybe non-central but we get pain and may involve other chest comfort and maybe in some situation uh, have a short spread especially related to stress or associated with pulmonary edema. So typically presentation of acute syndrome, chest pain or pressure, which is around 80% of uh, women and men with acute syndrome will be present with chest pain and pressure. But around 20% it's not presenting as chest pain. It may present diaphoresis, gastric pain or indigestion, shoulder or heart pain. And also maybe more like symptoms like dizziness, nausea, vomiting, chronic pain, or short spread. So uh, clinical high, uh, high clinical suspicion should be based on, especially in patient have uh, not found or risk factor for coronary effects. So by the 2021 SEC uh, guideline for evaluation and diagnosis chest pain, chest pain means more than pain in the chest. It can mean, can mean pain pressure, tightness, discomfort in chest, shoulder, arm, neck, back, or abdomen, or jaw as well as short spread and fatigue so it should be all considered as in general equivalent in patient to have uh, background of uh, uh, high probability of accurate uh, coronary artery disease so evaluation start by the assessment and be sure this adequate abc ensure good IP line of both patient care monitoring um, ensure registration equipment available. Do ECG within 10 minutes. This is uh, most important because acute syndrome may uh, have any uh, sudden attack or arrhythmia, maybe uh, have a sudden cardiac death at any time. So, this situation should be uh, available on open starting the treatment or open receiving the patient in the either ambulance or in the emergency room. Then have to take the test driving examination so that you have less time. Assess the main symptoms, assess the precipitating factor, assess possible causes or differential diagnosis, serious and cardiac causes, manageable symptoms, um, list any past history of cardiovascular risk factor, any past cardiovascular event, drugs, any contraindication to treatment, drugs also, especially for. Uh, uh, 
a young patient high suspicion of drug addict uh, medications uh, usual medication over the counter or any other medication that may contraindicate a treatment like uh, anticoagulation and then have assessment uh, of the uh, possible contraindication either by history or by examination uh, to uh, traumatize the patient or sometimes to debar the treatment like the patient uh, have allergies to aspirin, like the patient who is using post-based drugs because yes, yes, uh, in many situations we can use the uh, nitrate to relieve the pain. So um, history should elicit this before giving any treatment that may complete, complicate our treatment. Uh, target exam assess hemodynamic pulse stable, hemodynamic stability, heart failure signs, contraindication of treatment, thermogenic agent, beta blocker. All this is, uh, can be listed by either history or by examination. So, uh, as you mentioned earlier, ECG should be done within 10 minutes. If not diagnosed, should be repeated to 10 to 15 minutes. It's still high clinical suspicion of STEMI. Considering later for at least 24 hours, in the STEMI patient or until diagnosed with non STEMI rolled out or rolled in. In non STEMI, monitoring should be continued up to 24 hours or until PCI done with low risk of cardiac arrhythmia. But if high risk of cardiac arrhythmia, the patient should be in the uh, coronary units for longer time, and uh, monitor cardiac arrhythmia should be that. And now, right sided history uh, bleed should be done from the initial evaluation of just, uh, just skin. Uh, if the ongoing ischemia is suspected, and if there is any suspicion of the right sided or posterior wall myocardial arch, then um, do uh, basic lab. Uh, don't do it in the lab, especially patients have no contraindications uh, to give uh, a treatment or to shift the patient for the revascularization. Uh, then have uh, either diagnosed STEMI or non STEMI, like syndrome. Uh, the lab includes CPC biochemistry, coagulation, troponin, PMD. Uh, troponin uh, is recommended to use high system troponin, uh, ideally, measure the high system troponin at zero after one hour, after two hours needed. For non ST segment SES, as we mentioned earlier, ST segment elevation SES should not wait lab to get treatment. Uh, this uh, figure uh, showed the importance of high uh, troponin, which is the conventional troponin when detected in the coronary event and when it's elevated, but high troponin can be detected earlier than the conventional troponin, so that can be used in or to roll out coronary events. So the algorithm is 0, 1, and 2 hour algorithm. Uh, if you have a patient with suspected anastomy and without indicator for immediate advanced treatment, then take has to at 0 and 1 and 2 hour. Uh, if patient uh, initial very low initial high cytotropinin or low initial high cytotropinin and no increase in the 1 or 2 hour high cytotropinin, then uh, um, SES can be brought out. But if uh, if the high initial uh, high uh, initial high troponin is elevated or increase in one or two hour, then uh, we can go to in that way. If in between, we we'll observe the patient. So ATS spectrum includes stimulant and stimulant stable angina. Uh, the difference between stimulant and stable angina and acute coronary syndrome and the non stimulant or stimulant acute syndrome is the uh, uh, duration just usually in uh, unstable than less than 30 minutes. The characteristic uh, finding in STEMI is ST segment elevations, while non STEMI and STEMI can have positive troponin, while unstable and Jane have negative uh, troponin. So, to diagnose STEMI, you have certain ECG uh, criteria, the initial ECG. If uh, maybe non diagnostic in 45% uh, and normal in a 20% of patient who uh, is showing to have a with myocardial infarction. In early hours of infarction, big T wave, maybe only the present sign, hyperactive wave, maybe the only abnormality that can be seen in the patient with the stasis metal patient. Uh, yeah. So, ECG chance suggests of my acute myocardial ischemia, including either C segment elevation or C segment divergent anti wave changes. C segment elevation uh, defined by new C segment elevation at G point into contiguous leads, 
with a cut point more than one millimeter in the old lead except lead P2 P3, which which need more than two and a half in men in younger men lesser than 40 years old, and more than two millimeter in men more than 40 years, and in women they only need one and a half millimeter in women in all ages. For C segment depression and T wave changes, any new horizontal or down sloping T segment depression more than a half millimeter in two contiguous lead and or T wave incursion more than one millimeter in two contiguous lead with a permanent R wave or R stretch more than one. This is uh, highly suggestive of active myocardial ischemia. So, in this is based on the fourth um, myocardial definition, uh, fourth definition of myocardial infarction. The atypical is a dominant presentation include isolated stereo myocardial infarction. The isolated stereo myocardial infarction can be diagnosed by presence of more than 0.5 millimeter uh, ST segment depression in P1 to uh, P3 and ST segment depression more than 0.5 millimeter in steroid lead, which is our lead P7 to P9. Ischemia due to left main uh, or multiple disease uh, includes uh, ST segment depression more than 1 millimeter in eight or more lead coupled with the segment elevation in FER or V1, which is suggest the ischemia due to left main or multiple, multiple disease. Also, this is based on the fourth myocardial, uh, fourth, uh, myocardial infarction definition. In the bundle branch block or based rhythm, the criteria that we use to improve the diagnosis of the left bundle branch and, and uh, ST segment elevation based on fourth myocardial, uh, fourth definition of myocardial infarction. Uh, have uh, three criteria for left bundle branch or based uh, into curriculum. In a lead with negative cars complex, and then we need to segment elevation more than five millimeter. But in lead with positive cars complex, we need only one millimeter uh, to segment elevation to say this may cut the fraction in positive cars uh, complex lead. But in P1, or two feet three, which usually have is the segment elevation. Uh, if there is any segment depression more than one millimeter or one millimeter or more, this uh, equivalent to diagnosis of uh, myocardial infarction in left bundle branch to block. So this has to assist the segment elevation. Just look to the onset, the uh, Q wave to the onset of to the G point and measure the amplitude or the magnitude of the elevation of the g-point of the segment at the g-point between the point one and point two this gives you the amount of the segment elevation so this summary for the um, diagnostic criteria we go for drop the segment elevation stereo my lc exclusion or right side ventricular uh, metal and pattern usually uh, diagnosed by the segment elevation the uh, 7 to P9 and or P3 and P4 or right side lead uh, to diagnose posterior one MI and diagnose RC infarction. In multifacial disease, as we said this earlier, the segment division more than one millimeter in six or more uh, surface leads uh, coupled with the uh, ST segment elevation in FER. And this is slightly different from the brief definition, which is required more lead to diagnose the uh, multifacial disease. Left bundle branch block, uh, as we mentioned earlier, and right bundle branch block also have uh, some uh, difficulty in uh, uh, eliciting the myocardial infarction, but uh, uh, can be diagnosed most of the time. Uh, in present to isolated T wave. In version T wave in version more than one millimeter or more than five uh, in five leads or more, including lead one, lead two, and FL and P2, two, two, P6. This uh, can be suggestive of myocardial ischemia uh, and have only mild, uh, mildly impaired prognosis. Also, other significant um, uh, finding that. Uh, in ECG, uh, in an ST segment elevation, include ST segment depression. ST segment depression if more than 0.05 millimeter or half uh, uh, small square in lead V2 V3 or more than one millimeter in other leads, followed by horizontal or down slope in ST segment uh, uh, 
diamond sloping is the segment of more than 1.8 in more than uh, 1 in 8 except in FR. This indicates more severe ischemia. This is the this is a, to show how the is the segment depression can be um, suggestive of myocardial ischemia in the segment elevation of myocardial infarction. The transient the segment elevation that is not qualifying or not going with the segment elevation is also considered one of the find of the next segment elevation to have only mildly impaired prognosis. Uh, D1 winter syndrome, this include, include proximate LED eclosion uh, or severe uh, proximate LED uh, stenosis uh, uh, defined by one to three millimeter absolute ST segment depression at the G point in HP1 to P6, that is continue in, uh, in two or tall uh, positive and symmetric T wave as presented in this uh, uh, ECG. The winter absolute ST segment uh, division if you want to be six. This is highly suggestive uh, of uh, non ST segment elevation and you indicate proximal LED uh, occlusion or stenosis. Well, in signs, well, in sign is two type either type A, which is a uh, phase T wave uh, in lead P2, P3, uh, or in type 2, which is uh, present with symmetrical. And deeply inverted T wave in H P2 and V3, and occasionally may include V1 through V5 or V6. This is uh, type 2 well said. So type 2 deep T wave inversion and type 1 in the classic uh, T wave. So after finishing the diagnosis, the treatment include or started by the analgesia to decrease the patient uh, feeling the pain, so that decrease the heart rate, decrease the uh, uh, anxious, uh, oxygenation if needed, nitrate. If there is no contraindication with the or or lung acting needed, and to be let and prevalent in uh, most of the cases, thrombolysis in special situation, beta blocker is inhibitor, statin, mineral corticose antagonist, and sodium glucose co transport is inhibitor. The oxygen recommendation for any patient who have Oxygen saturation lesser than 90 percent to patients who have respiratory distress or other high risk feature of hypoxemia. Nitrates can be given uh, as sublingual nitrates by 0.3 to 0.5 milligram or in isorbide 5 milligrams sublingual every five minutes uh, for up to three doses if they're not resolved and patients not hypotensive start IP nitroxy. Please uh, Sure, there is no contraindication by the ECG, by clinical examination, by the history. There is no RT infarction, no history of hyperactive cardiomyopathy or ECG is suggestive or equal suggestive hyperactive cardiomyopathy, severe out stenosis by examination, use of ice stress inhibitor in the last 24 hours according to the post for stress. Hypotension with systolic blood pressure lesser than 95 and severe bradycardia, tachycardia are on RDs contraindication. Morphine is good to give morphine, especially if patient is severe pain. This dose two to four milligram and shall dose then may um, give especially if subliminal network is seen, not resolving the pain, they may in five to fifteen minutes for assistant for persistent chest pain. Incremental dose decrease uh, subsequent doses by two milligram to see if there is any resolution of the chest pain and to monitor for any side effect. Nitrapinous beta blocker can be given uh, for a patient who have uh, uh, chest pain and whose uh, patient uh, may undergo for primary PCN and no sign of heart failure and have no hypertension. Systolic blood barrier should be more than 120 millimeter mercury to give intravenous beta blocker. So, antiplatelet. Antiplatelet is important in the SAS patient, uh, including aspirin and other oral B2 white pulp inhibitor in patient undergoing for PCI. In patient undergoing for PCI. In patient with undergoing PCI within 24 hours after uh, fibrolysis, loading dose of 300 milligram globigrel followed by daily dosing is recommended to reduce ischemic event. This is for patient who undergo uh, thrombolysis. So, yeah, globigrel is a preferable. Uh, uh, Antiplatelet to be given. 
It also reasonable to use the uh, TK granulor or plastic granulor in preference to clobity granulor to reduce ischemic pain, uh, colon thrombosis. This also taken from the SSC guideline for the vascularizations. In person, the certain 75 uh, years old, uh, age undergoing CIA within a 24 hour after thrombolysis, uh, TK granulor may be uh, reasonable alternative to, granulor to reduce ischemic pain, but take of full precaution, transpiration is high, not high risk of bleeding uh, to given ticagrel because uh, there is high risk of the bleeding if ticagrel given in less than 24 hours after thrombolysis agents. In patient undergoing PCI who have history of stroke or transit, skin cancer, transpiration should not be given. So, this is the contraindication to aspirin. So, the loading dose for aspirin is two to three tablets, and loading dose for is 600 uh, milligram for the uh, Usual dosing, but lower dosing, 300 minutes should be given after pre-prolysis the therapy. Uh, loading dose for hospital, 60 milligram, but there is a recommended dose of 5 milligram in patients who have low body weight and who uh, patients have uh, more than 75 years old. Uh, Ticagrolol loading dose is 180 milligram and managing dose is 90 milligram PID. Uh, use the intravenous antibiotic agent in only special um, setting because intravenous antibiotic is not recommended routinely before the angiography. In patients who are undergoing cabbage, uh, discontinuation short acting uh, collect for P2B3 inhibitor. Able to be died and tampered for four hour and the for 12 hour uh, before surgery is recommended to reduce the bleeding. Uh, also, B2 Y12 receptor inhibitor should be stopped in reasonable time before the uh, cabbage. Uh, this uh, includes for clobidic five days, cagarol three days, and for brassigural seven days before cabbage. Uh, but in patients who are undergoing for elective uh, cabbage who are not already taking uh, aspirin, any shape of aspirin is recommended um, uh, in the preoperative uh, period for surgery. Uh, sorry, uh, the initiation of aspirin if in elective cabbage was not under, uh, given aspirin is not uh, recommended. So, in the recent uh, update in the European guideline, uh, there is two um, recommendations in OIC patient B2 to aspirin inhibitor uh, is recommended to, uh, in action to aspirin using uh, the initial loading dose followed by maintenance dose for 12 months unless there is high bleeding risk. Brassigal is recommended in uh, B2Y12 receptor inhibitor near patient proceeding to PCI at 60 milligram loading dose for Brassigal, uh, then 10 milligram. Uh, maintenance dose 5 milligram for a patient who has age more than 75 or with body weight is lesser than 60. Previously, these patients are have relative contraindication to give um, 10 milligram, but uh, the new recommendation is to give 5 milligram for these patients. The Cagrolol is recommended respective to treatment strategy in face of our conservative as 80 milligram loading dose and 90 milligram PID uh, as maintenance dose. For globally the loading dose is 100 to, 16, to 600 milligram, then 75 milligram maintenance dose. Uh, if prosperity or tachygrel is not available, in version to presenting for, uh, with ACS, uh, uh, stop dab to undergo uh, cabbage is recommended. They uh, then uh, may resume dab after surgery for at least 12 months. This is no difference between patients who are undergoing cabbage or undergoing BCI for duration of anti bleeding should be at least a 12 month year post vascularization. Um, uh, there is a recommendation for Brassigrel, which is preferable uh, to the Cagrelor uh, for a patient who is proceeding to the BCI. Glycoprotein 2 b 3 inhibitor. Uh, uh, should be considered if there is evidence of non reflow or thrombotic complication during CI. So uh, there is a limited uh, indication for these uh, patients in patient who is undergoing for BCI, but for patients who have conservative 
the treatment this agent is not recommended. In addition to have high risk, high bleeding risk, clopidogrel uh, is the uh, uh, consider uh, treatment strategies. So this summary of the anti black uh, treatment: aspirin, aspirin plus clopidogrel, aspirin plus ticagrelor, and plus aspirin plus prasugrel. For thrombolytic agents, should be given within thirty, uh, within six minutes initially or preferably. The, the initial 30 minutes should be given, which is the door to needle uh, time. Uh, and this patient is uh, going for primary BCI, the thrombolysis agent should not be given, and patient should be offered for uh, primary BCI. If patient have contraindication for primary BCI, of primary BCI is not available, so the thrombolytic agent should be given as soon as possible and recommended uh, uh, within 30 minutes from the or uh, to need. agent is only for uh, to segment the patient myocardial infarction. What's the thrombolysis, as we mentioned earlier, um, the applicable agent is clopidogrel, and the dosing according to the age, 300 is more than 75, more than 75 is uh, 75 milligrams, the agrilo, the preferable uh, is in patient half nut, um, Using thrombolysis in the uh, 24 hour or in anastomia or unstable angina in, in AHA recommendation. 